This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hey, everyone. How you going? Uh, doing good at the moment. Um, I may be being very uh, naive about this, but uh, California is about to get hit with a major storm. Um, right. We It's a tropical storm by the time it hits tomorrow. <laughs> right. And uh, we have not been hit by one of these in, I believe, 87 years. 80, 87 years? Yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I went out today and I drove by our Costco and the parking lot was packed. There was cars waiting to pull in. So yeah. it was like everybody's, I'm sure, doing the mad dash for water and toilet paper again. Yes. I was <laughs> going to say, those would be the two things I would think about as well if... Uh... If the you know once in an eighty-eight year typhoon, I don't, you don't really call them typhoon. No, they would be there, well. You? Like I said, it's it's a hurricane uh, until the wind speed doesn't, because it's still going to be over the 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 water the entire thing, time. Uh, it's just the oh, okay. wind bringing so over. Yeah. Will it cross the coast? Are they predicting the path will cross the coast? The path is going to go straight through Baja, Mexico. Um, okay. And then it it veers off. Um, and so they're predicting, uh, in certain areas, 10 inches of rain. <laughs> that's a lot of that's inches. That's a lot of rain. Uh, most of that's going to be going to the desert, where there's going to be some good old-fashioned flash flooding happening, like no tomorrow. Um, right, in the desert. Yeah, in the desert. So, I mean, I think like the, the two places where this is really going to affect is our desert because of the way that our mountains split um mm. wind is going to go up one side which is the desert the next day it's going to come on the other side of the mountains which is going to what's going to dump on on us mm. um but uh yeah the desert people they're obviously very much going to have to deal with washed out roads and everything because they're on the basin um and then i right. obviously along our coast yeah they're going to have to worry about flooding and stuff like that just cuz you know Low-lying areas. But mm. around here, I'm like, I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm just like... I think you might see some rain. Oh, we'll but... see some rain. But I've never seen our area deal with any kind of flooding. Um, yeah. In my it, I'd imagine there's not many waterways near your place. Not of that nature. Uh, and everything... I mean, our, our drainage system works pretty dang well. Uh Mm. You know, maybe there's going to be an intersection that's flooded. Um, I know that mm. in Los Angeles proper, there are certain freeways that are prone to flooding. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, that is certainly a possibility um, to slow down the old commute. But, yeah, we're much too hilly to uh, worry. About. I don't know. I Like I said, I might be being completely naive about this, but I'm also the guy that, you know, if I'm in bed and an earthquake happens... I literally go, is this bad enough to get out of bed? Nah. And then I just throw the sheets over my head. So, <laughs> Right. It's like, nah, it's not shaky enough. It's no, fine. no, no. We're very blasé about the natural disasters in California. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I mean, well, you know, the thing we, is we it... deal with fires every year. That's just, and mudslides. That's just, uh, that's a season for mm. us. So. <laughs> yeah. That's your, that's your flavor of natural disaster. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, down here we get, we get, tropical lows all the time mm -hmm. in brisbane um probably not so much this year i don't think because we're entering into la nina yeah um cycle down here so it's going to get drier um which you know we're overdue for because it's been wet for a while mm -hmm. uh let's be serious down here um so yeah it's gonna be an interesting probably extended drought i think over the next couple of well maybe six or ten years mm, okay um with less rainfall because um, I don't think it's going to swing back around to uh, El Nino again for a little bit. Well, that's what they're predicting anyhow, the, the Bureau of Meteorology is anyhow. So The, the crazy mm. number that I read was that in Las Vegas, because that's how far this, the rainstorm is going to then flip. It's going to... Uh, wow, hit, so it's, it's gonna a hit very Arizona. large area. Yeah, yeah. It's going to hit Arizona and, and Las Vegas big time. Uh, but Las Vegas in particular, in a given year, they normally get four inches of rain. Okay. They're expecting just on Sunday and Monday to get four inches of rain. 
Right, so their yearly total in, in two one, days. In two days, yeah. But th- this is fine. The, this, there's this not going to be, the, you know. <laughs> what I, the, the thing yeah, that I'm actually most flooding. interested in, because we uh, we had an insanely wet winter. We had these you know atmospheric rivers drench us, and it filled up a lot of our basins, a lot of our uh, uh, reservoirs that had been dangerously low. Um, lake oh, levels. really? Oh, oh, that's great to hear. Oh, yeah. The, the, the images of... Some of the lakes had gotten so low, they discovered towns that it had been flooded. <laughs> mm. um, I saw there was one there was one reservoir that was so low they've had to like move the pontoon down oh, yeah. further and further each year. Yeah. So is that now can, all underwater? And and like you can see, uh, I call it the the tan line <laughs> of the of yeah. the lake. Um, we're talking like 20, 30 feet tan line. Um, yeah, the tan line's up there. So like. n- yeah, but now <laughs> yeah. those have all filled up. Well, there are certain lakes that are s- perpetually low because they're the ones that everything drains from, right? That's just how right. they're, they're set okay. up. And they're now predicting with just with this storm that's dumping that it could potentially finally fill those up, um, which would be amazing wow. to see happen. Uh, that would be. That's very. That will be a very good situation of water security for California. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, because you know, you know. it sucks about the flooding, but we need the water. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, you 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 can't have full dams and reservoirs without a little bit of flooding. Unfortunately, we know this for a fact here in Australia. You know, it, it's yeah, it's it, it is inevitable and it sucks. But yeah, you you need the supply. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, mm. fun in my neck of the woods. Uh, we'll see how much Down I hear it on Monday pretty... when I'm working at the park. <laughs> oh yeah, well it's going to be pretty wet. You have to have all your wet weather gear on. For that, yeah, but the suck part is, is gonna, it's still going to be 80 degrees. Oh, so it's going to be hot, and you uh-huh. have to wear raincoats and uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like humid. that. I don't like that. No, humid's <laughs> gross. I, I I'm probably no. not going to be wearing a jacket. And I'll just walk around with an umbrella and hope that it doesn't blow away in the wind and uh, suffer that way. <laughs> yeah, I think you're, you're preparing yourself for what will be a suck time next week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be serious. It's going to suck. And uh, yeah, you're not going to have a great time. But, yeah. you know, these it's short-lived probably. And yeah. uh, by the end of it, you know, you'll have full reservoirs and you, you won't have the humidity anymore. Yeah. So you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, over on the movie front, so I did it to myself. Um, I had no intention of going and seeing Barbie. I was like, that mm. I'm, oh. I'll wait. I'll wait for that to be come on, you know, streaming. I, I didn't yeah. feel the need to go there. Um, not that I'm saying it's going to be a bad movie because by me by all reports, it's a really good movie. But it just was not one that I'm like, I gotta get to the theater for. That's that's not a necessarily a movie going requirement, right? No, no. But then I was all about, oh, I'm going to go see Oppenheimer, and I want to go see it in IMAX. Oh, yeah. And then the fact that it was yes. in 70 millimeter film IMAX, and there's only 19 of those theaters, or no, 20, maybe there's like 22 of those in the world, of which 17 are in the United States. <laughs> yeah, we've um, got one one here in yeah. Australia. It's down in Sydney, and that is it. Um, and then I'm sure you've seen the same thing that I saw. It's literally sold out every showing until it's out of yeah. IMAX. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, you know, they, they could basically extend the season probably indefinitely yeah. and they'd still get people going to see it. And yeah. Probably and, and it. The, the only problem is that they've already guaranteed the booking to other movies that are coming out. Um, right. So, because there's more and more movies using the 70 mil format, aren't they? When. <sighs> No, <laughs> that's the funny part. So when I talk uh, about IMAX, you know, we're talking true IMAX, the six-story tall yeah. IMAX. Mm-hmm. Um, With the proper p- IMAX projector that like, takes up a couple of rooms. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, and then there's the LIMAX, right? Well, <laughs> Which is like... It's uh, a big screen, big... but it's not six stories yeah. tall. Um, it's not the LIMAX. same aspect ratio. But they still brand it as, as well, IMAX? They're still branded as IMAX. Oh right, okay. Yeah, um, I, but like, <laughs> but like other uh, other people that don't have the IMAX branding, they just call it large format. 
Um, yeah, large format. You know, so it does expand. You know, if it's a two four zero ratio movie, it does expand to a one nine ratio. You know, gives you more picture on top of bottom stuff like that. Mm. Um, mm. But so, so realizing, you're not essentially letterboxing it. No, you're, you're yeah, going yeah, full. Um, yeah. I mean, it, and and but the difference between that and real IMAX, real IMAX, you're on a wall of seats basically, yeah. and yes. it takes up your peripheral vision. You have to move yeah. your head to see everything, and it's an up down moving your head experience too. Mm. Um, I mean, it really. The last time I saw something of this was when. Uh, it was the Dark Knight, and right. it was mind blowing on the eyes. It, it really was just like I always said. It was like it'd go pop into that because it was you know multi uh, uh, aspect ratios, but it would pop into okay. that, and it was like a cool breeze hit my eyes, and then my eyes just went, "Oh, isn't that lovely?" <laughs> right, um, interesting. So anyway, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go see IMAX in 70 millimeter film. Yeah, that's not happening. And then I was like, well, I guess Because you literally to... can't get a seat. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, and, and the nearest theater to me is, it's a half an, half an hour, 45 minute drive um, right. for a three hour movie. So now you're talking about, you know, it's a five hour chunk of your day that you're going to have to block out. And yeah, just, that's I, like a day trip. Yeah, I, I just yeah. didn't have the time. Um, now, the nearest IMAX to me is like 20, 25 minutes from me. So mm. even still, four hour chunk of the day, and so because mm. of that, I keep on like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do it, I can't. And as of this weekend, it's not in Limax anymore because Gran Turismo took it over. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe I'll just be waiting for Oppenheimer to come on the home home screen now. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of sad. I think you don't really have a choice. Yeah, I, you know, by this point, I'm just kind of like, well, I can probably deal. Yeah, I think probably if you were umming and ahhing that long about it, you actually didn't really want to go and see it on IMAX anyhow. I mean, the only reason why... <laughs> Otherwise, I wanted... you would have booked day one. Yeah, I mean, the, the only reason why I was thinking about it was because I was like, look, I know Nolan's films, they play better on a very big screen. There's no doubt about mm. it. Um, but the subject matter, I wasn't, like, excited about. Uh, no, it's, it's pretty bleak. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's be serious. So, on the flip side... I will definitely go see Dune 2 in true IMAX. Like bu booking your seats now I'm, for it type I'm of thing. I'm going to, that one, I'm going to absolutely make every effort to go have that happen. Mm. Um, so. So, you know, for, for me here in Brisbane, uh, you know, th there's no such viewing experience available. Um, the one thing that is interesting though is there's a cinema i think it's down the gold coast it's one of the chain cinemas um called event cinemas here they have a new cinema technology where the screens wrap around three sides of the room yeah i've um, heard hit and miss about that yeah so that's the that's what their their new big thing is to try and get people back into the cinema again this like wrap around thing um I mean, apparently they've got like they did it, and they've got booked like films that actually support that as mm -hmm. a format coming through. Um, so you know they were citing you know Top Gun Maverick as yeah. one of them, I think, did, used it in the aircraft scenes. Um, and really, it's like it's kind of like just three screens on your desk. What? But a bit now, have you gone and done it? Well, no, because I, they only just released it here. Okay. So something that I heard, and I've not seen it myself, um, mm. but when... Because it's not the entire movie using the three screens. It, it's, it's some scenes. It's select yeah. scenes. So when it's not using the three screens, you know how you see those videos where it's from somebody's phone, but because they want to fill up the 16 by 9, they show like a blurry colored image you know on either side oh yeah i've heard that's what it does <laughs> when it's not oh. in that moment because they don't want the screens to be black they want there to always be some kind of light spectacle and so oh no that, that my understanding that. is it can be quite distracting and then the other problem that happens is that sometimes the screens aren't 100 percent synced up and oh that's rubbish then and right. What that brings me around to reminder of is, have you ever heard of uh, Cinerama? 
uh, Cinerama Dome. So Cinerama no. was an old movie format um, back in the 50s. Uh, oh, okay. And it's super widescreen. Like, oh, right. It's like a 2-9 aspect ratio. Um, it, it's insane. Wow, okay. And movies that were filmed, like Ben-Hur was done in this. Um, and there was, a, there was a few movies that were filmed in this ultra-wide format. And literally mm. at the Cinerama Dome, where this was a big thing, which is a curved screen, they had three film projectors in order to project this. But back then, it was really an issue of, man, your projectionist better be on point because, and the they, projections themselves were They better weren't. know how to cue things up properly. Well, yeah, so there's the cueing, but then there's also, if there's any vibration at all, your side screens are kind of, you know, vibrating. Oh. In, it, yeah, so uh, since then, <laughs> they came up with projectors that could do the entire image in, out of one film strip. And so that right. solved it. But there weren't that many. I mean, I think the number of movies that were made in Cinescope were literally uh, maybe a dozen, if that. Um, it was a fad. It again, was, to try and get people to go back into the cinema again. Well, it it was the te the television had just come out. And up until, oh, that, yep, so. up until that point, movies were in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. And then oh, TV, really? Yeah. And then TV comes out. And they went, well, we got to battle that. We, we got to do something about this. And so they went <clears throat> ultra wide. Um, and then TV went 16 by 9. And Well, yeah, 50 years later. <laughs> or 40 years yeah, later. 50 years later. But... It, it took some time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, anyway. There's your, uh, there's your dose of movie talk, folks. Hope you enjoyed there it. There you go. We, we, we did it. We don't do it often. But, uh, yeah, there we are. Yeah, it's in the bag. It's in the bag. So, what do you say? What do we? Uh, what do we talk about? A little uh, pinball here. Um, we're going to talk about yes. some new offerings that are coming out uh, at the end of the show. We'll do that. Uh, mm. But for right now, I thought it'd be interesting. There are, uh, I want to say, thirty-three. I think is the non magic number. Um, tables mm. that. Hold on, I actually have my list here. Let me uh, let me bring this up real quick, and I can see um, 34, 34. 34. 34 Williams Bally <clears throat> tables that are currently in uh, the Pinball Arcade that have not made their way yet to uh, Pinball FX. Hmm. And I've seen some people kind of, you know, hey, when are we going to get this? When are we going to get this? I love it that it's in... Uh, you know, Pinball Arcade, but we don't have it here. And, and this is coming from uh, the announcement, uh, partly of which we'll talk about later with um, uh, Star Trek Next Generation about to drop. Mm. So that got me thinking. Well, what would Jared and I want to pick first? Or our top five yeah, if we, that we want the from that <clears throat> list to come on over uh, to Pinball Effects first? Um, mm. it's sort of a speculation because we really don't know what's coming up next. Um, no, we don't from this list. Um, so it's more of a wish list than a speculation, but, um, you know, we'll see where the conversation leads, whether we uh, dive into the speculation or not. Um, yeah, but so we're going to do our top five, but we also have some honorable mentions because to, let's be honest, it was really hard to pick only five. Because the, the, of the 34 tables that are on this list, there's some heavy hitters in there. Right? Right. So yeah. we're also going to do some honorable mentions. And mm. uh, uh, real briefly, just give a shout out to why we're putting them honorable mention. And then we'll actually do a discussion on what our top five are and why we picked as such. So first yes. things first, though, let's bring up this list of uh, all the tables. You know what sucks, Jared? Well, finding PNGs of these images, and you'll notice the ones that are in white box are the ones that I could not find a PNG image of the logo. <laughs> I I I feel your pain, yeah. Chris, because when when I have to do the title cards for all the um, Twitch stream snips mm -hmm. I do, I I have this problem. So, oh. <laughs> Luckily, and this is largely thanks to the the amazing um, VPX community who. Um, a way ahead of us with this sort of thing. They have they've spent a lot of time really doing a great job at getting some of these 
Scully Williams logos. Well, I will very, say the, very the logos that you see that are in a white background, those came from VPX. Um, yep. Everything else did. There's didn't. other ones. Because they don't have them in a PNG format. They just, hey, we, we have a white background anyway, so who cares? Um, although it should be easy. To, like, if I spent some time, it would not be hard to extract from the white background and create it as a, as a true PNG clear background yeah. image. Uh, but I didn't have time today. Um, so for our, right. for our friends... That's a little that are, Yeah. So for our friends mm-hmm. that are audio only, um, you're not staring at this screen of uh, 34 titles, so I'll just read them off to you. Um, <laughs> here is what has not made its way yet to the uh, uh, pinball effects that's in Pinball Arcade. Uh, Bonsai Run, Black Knight, Black Knight 2000, Cactus Canyon, Centaur, Cyclone, Diner, Doctor Who, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Earthshaker, 8-Ball Deluxe, Elvira and the Party Monsters, F-14 Tomcat, Fathom, Fireball, uh, Firepower, Firepower 2, Gorgar, High Speed, Indianapolis 500, Jackbot, Judge Dread, No Fear, Paragon, Pinbot, Scared Stiff, Sorcerer, Space Shuttle, Spanish Eyes, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, Taxi, Wild Card, Who Done It, and Xenon. So, Jared, how many of those did you actually go? What was that table? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few. <laughs> Do I remember uh, that like, one? Like, you hmm. know, Spanish Eyes and uh, what was the other one? The Wild, wild card. card. I went, what? To two E, no. Wild Card's an EM, isn't it? Uh huh, yeah. So it's Spanish Eyes. Yep. Um, Fireball uh, yeah, I just is, went. is an EM also. Fireball. Oh, yes. Technically, the one with the zipper flippers mm-hmm. is an EM. Mm-hmm. Correct. It's just at the tail end of EMs, yes. I think. Just at the tail end. Yes. Um, so yeah. interestingly enough, I kind of, from this entire list, um, I'm just going to throw this out here. Tables that are never going to come to pinball effects. Spanish Eyes, <laughs> Wild Card, <laughs> Fireball. Um, I'm going to put in Paragon and Gorgar. I don't think they'll ever see the light of day in pinball effects. Gorgar is... I... Yeah. The only it's significance of Gorgar is, is the first one with speech, but it's not a good pin. It's really not a good pin at no. all. Um, and, and Paragon, unfortunately falls into it yes it's those six bally wide bodies um mm. they're solid state yes but for all intents and purposes they're ems they're slow players um yeah you know so paragon future spa uh, uh space invaders space invaders um embryon what are the last two jared i don't know I, I I can't recall them off the top of my head. I can't recall the uh, the last two, but anyway, I don't I don't think those are seeing the light of day. Um, if I had to guess, it's only going to be uh, from 1981 forward. Um, and yes, Gorgar. It's going to be no. I think Gorgar is 80. pretty. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's going to be pretty much the. <clears throat> I think you can pretty much count on the software system that runs. Um, so first generation Pinbot. And space shuttle and those that era of pinball controller, that's probably where they're going to cut off the um, the conversions. I think is that system um, nine system, or is it yeah, earlier? or is it? I can't remember. Uh, it's been so long since I've known the systems that that were on these. Yeah, I think it's something like system nine. It's the system before system eleven. Yeah. Um, and often those tables are actually lumped into System 11 as a moniker, but really they're not. No. They're a different so- like hardware system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I don't think we're going to see the really early solid states without alphanumerics or at least like s- sort of pseudo alpha numerics, which is what Space Station has. It's got like the segment displays. Yeah. 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 So anyway, those are that's, that's my picks for what you'll never have. Of those, if any were, were to actually happen... I think Fireball would have the best chance. Um, but 
mm. again. It's got, at least it's got stuff going on. Because it's got stuff it. going on. That's I, exactly the only reason why I, I say that. But mm. uh, I don't. I don't see it's too much effort to try and emulate a uh, an EM. That's yeah, because there there is no emulation. No. You have to script it. Script the entire thing. You know. Yep. So you know, the far side did it. They were very good at scripting. Um, but yeah, Zen. I don't think that's a priority for them. No. At all. Um, all right. So taking those off the table. Now mm. we're at 29 tables. Um, so and let's don't go worry, through. I didn't pick any of them. So this, this doesn't is, affect I the result whatsoever. I knew you didn't. <laughs> um, let's go into our honorable <clears throat> mentions and look at this. Hey, I'm going to make it so that we can actually, you know, monitor what's going on here. Um, all right. Yeah. I'm going to pick my first honorable mention. And okay. that one, believe it or not, Earthshaker. Wait, why did I mm. do? Uh, typing. Oh, okay. It just wants to do that. Interesting. All right. It makes uh, it a number. Yeah. It makes it a numbered list. Earthshaker. List. No, this is Earth shocking Shaker. to me because uh, I love Pat Lawler tables. Um, mm. It's the first of his disaster tables. But you know what? It's not a top five. It's just a, a cool to have. So that's why I put mm. that. All right, Jared, what's your first honorable mention? All right, my first honorable mention, and this is from, um, I guess, top to bottom, I guess. Uh, it might surprise you, actually. It's actually Who Done It. Who Done It. Hmm. All right. Why is it? Uh, what is it that you were like, yes, I want that? So it's. Uh, it's. Of the DMDs, I think it is. It's a quirky table. Um, it doesn't really have the depth of rule set that some of the other ones on the top five list have, but it's yeah. still fun enough that you want to sort of play it and experience it, particularly if you have not experienced it in real life before. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on then to my second honorable mention. And for this one, it is F14 Tomcat. Ah, uh, the Yagoff. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a really fast table, and I love it for that. Uh, but it's not a table that has a lot going on as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I love it for the yeah, speed. You're absolutely right. I love it for the aiming, but it it's a fairly one-trick pony. It's literally just a, a Twitch reaction table. <laughs> it is I mean Yagoff the Yagoff mode is fun for the first one time that you hit it <laughs> and after that it's sort of like okay yeah I can see what you're doing there um, I mean the only real benefit that that table did is actually introduce proper ender stroke switches on um, pinball and made them very relevant yeah. because you know that that kickback was <laughs> destroyed flippers yes. <laughs> but yeah you're right it is it is a fun fast game but it is very much of that era yeah um and it it's like it's it's pretty much if you think about it it's a a mirror image of the mechanism that you see on um swords of fury with the little diverter lanes that divert mm -hmm. the ball in so mm -hmm. it's yeah you're right it's a good place to put it in the honorables i think yeah all right let's have jared's next pick then all right so my uh, top five honorable and second um, position is Bonsai Run. Um, the reason why I put Bonsai Run in an honorable is that, yes, it's unique. Yes, the upper play field is fun to use, but it's a one-trick pony. Yes. Uh, that's that upper play field, and that's literally where you try and spend your time and don't spend much time on it. So, yeah, I've played this. I've had the fortune of playing it extensively over at one of the arcades that has one on site. And, yeah, I, it's, it's nice to experience it every time you go there, but you're not going to stay on it for hours. The I thought about putting it in the honorable mention, and the only reason mm. why I didn't was because I don't want to have to switch screens. I want it to be in cab format with both playfields visible at the same time. That that's is literally challenge. That's literally yeah. my thing. That uh, is what because that's the novelty of it. But I also mm. want to be playing it on a vertical screen because that's going to make a lot of sense. So 
Um, you want you to know. essentially see that ball go from lower play field yep. up to the top and see yep. it go from your vertical screen up yep. to the horizontal screen. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yep. So that's kind of why I didn't put on the honorable mention. Um, but Bonsai Run definitely has a soft spot in my heart because it's one of the first pinball machines I know for a fact that I played. Um, right. That's like, etched in your memory it's as etched, a first I know time which, I know what arcade I was at, where it was. Yes, it's etched in my memory. Um, yeah. So it does hold a special place in my heart for that reason. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Moving on to uh, my pick then. Number three. Number three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Not starting a reference there. This one. Scared stiff. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I'm... Look, Scared Stiff is a... It's a fun table. I like the call-outs. Mm. But it's kind of easy, and it's a grinder. Um, You spend yeah. a long, long, long time on that table to get anywhere. Uh, so I like the aesthetics. I don't necessarily like the gameplay. Hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that's, uh, that's yeah. why I put that there. Yep. So for for my third place, uh, scared stiff. Is it really? <laughs> You're literally in third position. <laughs> it's the, the same game. Uh, it uh... is like it is. It's a modern DMD with a system eleven rule set. Yeah, that's that's what I class scared stiff at. and the the only feature of it is the innuendo mm -hmm. which is very important but it's it is you know once you've heard it you've heard it and then it just comes back to the play field yeah i mean it's it's right. it's as comical as medieval madness but medieval mm. madness's gameplay is phenomenal that's right and that's what elevates it doesn't medieval rely madness. on elvira sass to actually sell the table right you know right yeah um so yeah that's why i put that there all right moving on mm. To mm -hmm, number mm -hmm. four. Number four. Um, let's see. It is Jackpot. Ah, right. Jackpot. Um, I'm... Look, I, truth be told, of the three uh, Pinbot tables, I personally like Bride of Pinbot. Um, I know it's a one-trick pony. I just happen to like the trick, and it makes me sweat. Um... Hitting, yeah, it's, it's going for that billion shot. It just drives me. It's a shot I can nail every single time up until that moment, and then I'm like, all, you know, and then fumbling about. Yeah, you that center ramp is this wide, and that goes this wide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think Jackbot is definitely the code update that was needed to Pinbot mm. uh, to make it interesting. But I really don't find the shot selection on Pinbot all that interesting. So, um, yeah. I, but Jackpot's very playable, so that's why that's why it's there. Uh, but it, it's just not compelling enough to be a top five. Yeah, like I felt it deserved the honorable mention, but it's not like it's. I would never put it top five. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's all. So, my my one in this position was Earthshaker, um, just because for the same reasons you've mentioned, like it's yeah. a it's an interesting game, but you know it's it's fun, but you know, I'd say I'd be more in favor of in uh, if they actually did all of the prototype mods for it. That would be cool. Oh but yeah, the the Rising Earthquake Center for sure. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't change anything to do with the the gameplay, but yeah. it just would be really cool to see that as a visual a visual extra. Yeah. I think that would be a nice little nod to the designers that made that a visual extra in the table. Well, I mean I mean and that's one of the things that Farsight actually did do because it's like, hey, we don't have the only reason we got pulled was because they were worried about maintenance issues. Um, yeah. It had nothing to do with expense. It was purely this is going to be a nightmare for our operators. Um, yeah. So if you're going digital, why not have it in there? That's yeah. 
you know. Absolutely. Um, and and I for sure, if Zen did it, they'd be silly if they didn't do that. I mean, they'd be mad not to. With no, all the other exactly. enhancements that they've done, why wouldn't you? That's ever... an absolute gimme to <laughs> put in. That's a right? total gimme. Um, with with nice like rocky animations going as the thing settles into the ground and yes. actually give it some shake, not just yeah. roll it up and down like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. really um, go all in on the Earth Shaker thing there. Because I would even I would even do the same thing if they did uh, firepower, give the option of stand up targets or the drop target. Um, yeah. The drop targets on firepower are that mechanical drop target, which kind of suck. <laughs> mm. um, it, it's that that era. It wasn't just bim, pew, and it drops. It was bim, which triggered something that made it go, um, which oh. actually slowed the game down. Oh, so they're like almost motorized? Yeah. Or well, soft drop targets, are they? They, it, they, it, it, they it's, lower slowly. It's like it's a motor... Because typical drop targets, the way they're reset, it's one big bar that goes chunk and raises everything yes. back up. And these yeah, were on a motorized... Loaded. Yeah, these were on a motorized bank that would raise them back up. Oh, so it was the motorized bank that would reset them, yeah. not a solenoid. Why yeah. would they have chosen to do that? It would have been so much more expensive. Don't know. But that's why it never... Weird. It, that, that system, I think, was only used on one other pinball machine before mm. Williams went, yeah, this is dumb. We're not doing that. Um, but that's is, why they specifically... Drop targets. Yeah, that's why they specifically pulled it from Firepower, though, was that it it, uh, it slowed the game down and was overly mechanical. <laughs> Just, like, yeah. not necessary. Um, yeah, so. not necessary at all. Yeah. That's silly. All right, my uh, my final... When it comes to honorable mentions, Judge Dredd, another one Judge Dredd. that had uh, <laughs> that I'd want the prototype version just because I want Dead World spinning. Um, an easy, an easy ask for Farsight to put in, not yeah. Farsight to uh, Zen to put in. Now, here's the funny thing about Judge Dredd. I really don't remember that much about it. Oh, okay, that it's, might be clouding your judgment here, it, it's, because I do. <laughs> yeah, um, it's one of those. I think it's a table that I like in theory, um, but I never actually really sat down with and played a lot. So that's why I mm. put it as fifth because it just kept on jumping out to me as a title that I was like, "Ooh, yeah, I'd like that next." But then I was like, "But do I really want it?" I don't know, and I couldn't make up my mind, so I just threw it in as number five. You made it honorable. Yeah. Yeah. All right. For my fifth one, I put down Cactus Canyon, but with a caveat. Okay. Uh, I I would want the latest code for it. Um, so without the latest in. code, it wouldn't even make your honorable mention? No. Okay. wouldn't even make the honorable mention. I, in, in that case, I would swap it out for T2. Okay. Um, T2 only because it... Like of that era of pinball machine, there's not a lot going on with it. It's a great layout. It's fun to shoot, but as far as rules go, it's shallow as a puddle you find on uh, the street. So I think it's safe uh, to say the T two is not making your top five. Absolutely not making my top five. No. So it's not it making my top mention. five either. And honestly, I put F fourteen Tomcat in place of T two. Because there's a lot of aspects of the two that are similar in terms of speed. Um, mm. But I like what F14 does better. Because you're right. It's a shallow, shallow It is game. a shallow game. I think a lot of the bill of materials went on licensing on that table, if yeah. we're looking back. Because Belly Williams of that era, they were producing tables to a price. Um, probably more so than Stern is now. They, they're quite happy to charge extra if they need to spend more on licensing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Belly Williams of that era are going, no, 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 this is the price. And therefore, we have to cut some things out of this play field. Like, yeah. It introduces the cannon mechanic, which is cool. but And it's fun to shoot. The ramps are good if you start getting a pattern in place. But there's there's not a lot going on in the no. table. No. Um, and truth be told, I think the T3 table that Stern did is a better table. Oh yeah, it's got well, it's got more shots, more ramps, and the um, the RPG mechanism in the back yeah. box is really cool. Yeah. So yeah, I like t the T three table much better. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so that moves us into our top five. Uh, Jared, we're going to start with mm. our number fives and go to number one, just so you okay. know what order we're doing this. And uh, I'm going to let you have the honor of going first here. Okay, so my top five, Williams is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Number five, Bram yep. Stoker's Dracula. A solid choice. Mm. Mm. What, what about um, yours? Oh, you don't want me to go? No, like, you just got. I'm just. We're, we'll we'll discuss what your uh, fifth one is there, and uh, and what why the uh, decision process. Um, okay, tell so me about Bram it. Tell Dracula. me about it. What is it that is like that it, is a top five table? So it's it's got that really cool Miss Multi Ball in it, yes. and it doesn't get old for me. Like that that feature. Like once you experience it, you want to experience it again. It's a really cool feature. I mean, there's a reason um, why Zen has put it into multiple <laughs> of their tables that's right because it's awesome yeah um as as an effect so um it's got that it's got the the, the thing that i really love about it it doesn't really have any modes to speak of mm -hmm. but the the ability to triple stack that multi-ball once you get it and you've yeah. experienced the triple stack multi-ball and and dracula screaming 30 million at you <laughs> over and over again there's nothing quite like it in pinball. It is great, so that's why it's in the top five. I I agree that it uh, it's a rewarding table, and it's mm. a hard table. It um, is. I did not make my top five. Interesting. Um, what was your top five in that position? Well, so uh, and it, it, the funny thing is, is like I thought about putting Dracula in, but I just kept on coming up mm. with other tables instead. Uh, for whatever okay. I guess it ne just never made a huge impression on me um, and maybe that's because I never played it or I know I have actually played it in the arcade but very little so that mm. might be a, a factor there um, yeah. alright so for my number five diner diner, diner. okay so, I know, you all are like, what? Diner? Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> mm. I went with Diner because it's the better version of Taxi. And Yeah, I'd agree with you on that. Um, Ta taxi, taxi didn't make my list at all. Right. Uh, but I feel like Taxi is such a classic. Mm. And I've put in a lot of time on Diner. I do like Diner. Um, to me, it's one of the better System 11 tables, and I have a soft spot for System 11, period. Um, yeah, you, we, we know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's a good era of pinball. Right. So um, I, I, just, I just really felt that uh, it should be in the top five uh, for all those people that would be like, you got to put Taxi in there. I'm like, no, I'm going to put Diner in there instead. So it's kind mm. of a, not for me, it's for you. Kind of a pick, <laughs> right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, foreshadow this and say there are no System Elevens in my top five. I'm not surprised to hear that from you. Mm. I'm not surprised in the least. All right. So what is your number four? Number four, no fear, dangerous sports. No fear. So no fear. this table is uh, it's again got the jump ramp feature, which we've seen in. Uh, um, Ghost Rider in Zen's uh, mm -hmm. is literally a direct rip of it. Mm -hmm. um, the jump ramp feature, and it's a fun feature. If it's hard to dial it in, but once you dial it in, you get looping on it. Amazingly fun to shoot. Um, lots of good modes, good multi ball, um, fast game, fan layout, just shoots really quickly, and yeah, it's 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 quite fun. It is a very fast combo y table, no doubt about yes. that. You've got to do on-the-fly shots on it. You can't trap and shoot. My impression while playing it has always been I'm just shooting for air because there are no targets. There's no stand-ups. It's just ramp, 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 um, which is shocking because I love ramps. Um, yeah. But again, no fear. That's an, never... an interesting observation and a valid one, and I didn't even think about that until you said it. The only stand-up targets on it are the ones that you use to relight kickback and that's it yeah yeah so it's a table of shooting air which is mm. like i said it's a fast table no doubt about it um but that's always been my knock against it 
Oh, yes. That and, I'm sorry, the brand. <laughs> no fear. Hey, it's, ve- it's very much of the era, isn't it's it? It's very right? much of the era, and I didn't like it at that time either. Um, it, right. it was kind of like prior to that, uh, the surf brands, you had Maui and Sons, that was the Cool Kids brand, and then you had Town & Country, that was the Poser brand. Um, <laughs> and that's how I always felt about No Fear. I was just like, yeah, that's the uh, that's the Kmart shirt. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interesting. So mm. I'm just saying I might be a little biased against the table purely because of that. Yeah, because of your attitude of the brand at yes. the time. Yes, it has nothing to do. Yeah. It's kind of like my thoughts on, on Flintstones. It has nothing to do with the table being actually fun to play. It has everything to do with I don't want another part of that movie. Um, <laughs> it was a terrible movie. The table is actually quite fun, and you yes. you do need to look past the ter- the just the terribleness of the movie. If yes. if it could be redone with cartoon uh, theming, I'd be all. If over they could Hanna Barbera that, that yes. would be amazing. It would be amazing. Yeah. All right, um, yeah. number four for me. Eight Ball Deluxe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know why that's in your top five. Well, yeah. So it is a machine that I actually one. own. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And so I I actually enjoyed Farsight's version of it. I think I would enjoy mm. Zen's version even more. Um, there's something about pinball and pool theming that works naturally i don't know what it is maybe balls being struck huh. um yeah it, it carries it carries through the ages there's been yeah. lots of pool themed tables um eight ball deluxe is a shooter table you got oh, it's aim. target rich you yeah, got it's aim. target rich there's drop targets all over the place um interestingly enough though fathom is essentially eight ball deluxe 2.0 uh with just a little bit extra but mm. that little bit of extra is not... It falls on the theming for me. So that's why I prefer a ball deluxe. Um, mm. Interesting. But, yeah. Uh, so that's why I kind of threw that in there because it's, it's... I guess my list is less about what I think the best tables that should be coming forward and more about the ones that I'm most curious to see what Zen would do with them. Oh, that's uh, an interesting take on it. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I guess that's kind of where my head is at. Um on these um, I think to an extent so. I, I did consider the like what Zen could do with them to an extent yeah um, but I really focused on you know what what would you see what would you want to see and what would you play more mm-hmm. in the table like if I was scrolling through the list of Belly Williams um, tables that are on offer in the app what would I actually gravitate towards and want to play and that's what influenced me with my yeah. list which is why my third position is jackpot excellent here we go if you if you have to have either pinbot or jackpot you choose you jackpot, choose jackpot. <laughs> um we are very much in agreement risk, on that it's definitely the risk reward on this table that that made it go into the top five like the casino run mode in that is it would make or break the leaderboards in um, in pinball effects, and it's not just random luck. You do actually have to be skillful to do well in it. So, mm. I think that would be a really interesting leaderboard leveler. I know on... when I've played that in tournament settings, uh, shouting matches happen. <laughs> like yeah, people yes. get people get very angry at other people that are Very. playing it in in you know in your grouping uh based on what yeah. they're doing with the scoring and stuff yeah it's <laughs> yes it is it is not one that you would normally put into tournaments unless you actually had tournament settings installed yeah on it which kind of levels things a little bit um but yeah it's still it's still a bit of a it's a contentious one and i don't really think you see it that much in tournaments yeah, yeah. um all right so i guess it's my turn for number three Number three for me, Indianapolis 500. Oh, Indy 500, hey? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, this table is insanely fun to play. I know that in Pinball Arcade, I spent a buttload of time playing it. Um, yeah. 
I don't know what it is. It has that just one more time factor in spades. It's not mm-hmm. a one shot table, uh, and there's strategy that can be used in it. Um, I just think it's a really, really fun, interesting, shooting, flowy table. Um, yep. I don't Pull even out know who designed, some shots I don't even know who designed it. Do you know? Do you know off the top of your head who designed it? No, I couldn't tell you. But whoever did, they did a really good job at realizing really the theme on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is one of those that, again, I really think that Zen would do a number on uh, with the enhancements. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so. It's also got the um, the feature of the like off-center car like mm-hmm. that vibrates the whole table, but it's actually a vibrator motor that's visible to you as a player, which is a bit of a unique thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, Hot Wheels by American Pinball knocked that off 100%. Oh, did they really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they absolutely did. Um, and blatantly paid homage to that table, for sure, in their design. Uh, but it's, yeah. It's the table that, because I used to like playing Victory also in Pinball Arcade. Uh, it was one of the few f- dot fun... that I liked. I, yeah, but victory. Who boy did it need a code? Of, I mean, like I think we did an episode about it one time where we just like went, if we could recode this, it would be amazing. Um, and a lot of the ideas that I had from it came directly from Indianapolis 500. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. That was a it. The, the, yes, uh, that was a, a fun table, a fun Gottlieb. Yeah. That one. All right, let's go to your runner-up. All right, so in second place, uh, Judge Dread. Uh, the reason is now. See, uh, I thought you were going to you were hating on it earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. I was being coy because you it was in my top coy. five, and because it is second place, because it's got really uh, interesting modes in it. Mm-hmm. Um, they force you to shoot around and explore the playfield a lot. Yeah. Um, you've got the 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 secondary left and right buttons that allow you to select which mode you um, go for, um, which does play into the safe or risk strategy of when you're playing in tournaments in this well, one. Well, crap, because um, Farsight's claiming they can't do second buttons. Uh, if Pinball Effects is claiming they can't, yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah, the launch effects. button would just need to cycle like one way basically uh, which is just it's not acceptable to me no. but anyhow but um like so there's that element there's the um uh and most importantly it came in because of super game oh yeah um, super game because you, you get super game six ball multi ball it's like a, it's a game within a game um and you know they've already got a pattern for um, doing super game or like extra mode games that they put into safe cracker mm-hmm. where you can like select it on the DMD, which I think is a really neat integration. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would, you know, that's a, like a super game. That's another super pin as well. So it would sit quite nicely with um, uh, Star Trek, the next generation as well. Right. So yeah, that's why it's number two for me. All right. My number two. Centaur. Centaur. Um, I mean, you've heard us talk about this. No, that's not where I wanted that one. No, it's going to probably do that to me. Anyway, all right. Uh, <laughs> worried about formatting. Um, Centaur. It doesn't matter. Uh, right? It doesn't. Um, yeah. I love the aesthetics of this table. I just really yeah. do. Um, getting the orbs in and then juggling that ball to make sure that you always have a multi-ball going is very satisfying, um, very challenging. Um, and it just has a lot of interesting shots. Uh, it's got your edge of flipper shots. It's got your you know, vertical drop or horizontal, you know, vertical row drop targets. Um, yeah, stacked drops. You've got to aim and knock things in the proper order in order to light your orbs. Um, I don't, and, and then the visuals on it are just beautiful to me. Uh, again, I just yeah. really think that I want to see very badly what Zen could do visually on it. Um, they could really go to town with it. Yeah. Like, 
yeah they could yeah make basically the 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 motorbike centaur dude come to life yeah uh and it would look amazing uh so yeah it would be i i would agree you know the other thing as well it's got the the lane saves that you've mm-hmm. got as well with the thing so you know that's a really cool feature as well it is and yeah it's a it's a shooter's paradise that table as well there's lots of really fun things to shoot for yeah and i have spent a lot of time on this in real life uh and yeah it holds up <laughs> it's it's just a yeah. fantastic like if you play a centaur that is nicely well maintained whoo it's it's a beaut so i think it's this one, the, the thing coming out from haggis uh those are going to be some lucky people um they're going to enjoy the yeah. crap out of that so oh heck yeah and yeah. you know even like you know on the haggis side of things with that 2.0 code of uh uh, centaur as well yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be a treat for yeah. sure yeah um so yeah um so the, I, I would love to see that game yeah in there in the top five as well no question about it it's it's amazing um so yeah for sure which brings us to number, number one. one um and my number one uh indy 500 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for this exactly the same reasons as you said, it's a great shooting table. Uh, it yeah, it's fun as heck. So what you're saying is we've already discussed it, so there's no need to go further. <laughs> yeah, enough said. No further comments. No further comments. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> my number one. You're gonna laugh at this, Jared. Mm. Cactus Canyon. Oh, really? <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> we couldn't Cac- be on opposite Cactus spectrums. Canyon with no conditions. <laughs> um. So, I love this table even in its unfinished state. I right. love the uh, the gun shootout. Um, it's, fun. it's it's still better than what uh, uh, Zen did with um, Wild West. Wild West, whatever that is, it's just not because it's Wild Page. West, is it? Yeah, oh, Wild yeah, Wild West, West Rampage. Rampage. Yeah, um, it's it's better there. Uh, Mm. I love the multi-ball in it. I love the humor in it. Um, so there's there's all that. I just find myself playing it no matter what. Um, I played it yeah. again a ton in Pinball Arcade. If they do the 2.0 code, if they did Cactus Canyon Continued, it's bonkers brilliant. Um, playing drunk mm. multi-ball doing uh, the new codes and, and actually having you go through all of the bounties um, to get to Bionic Bart. Um, it's, it's visually a very interesting table. Um, I've said it. If if I could have afforded uh, what Chicago Coin Company did, I would have gotten that. Um, you would have actually bought it one yeah. new in box, eh? Yeah. 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 I, just, I really, really like it. I think it's a spectacular table. So... I think I got, uh, I think I got a poor taste of it from Farsight's implementation of the mine because it was just the ball was not blocked with the mine, yeah. And it should have been, I think. Yeah, it was you could just shoot it. As hell. <laughs> you just you could just shoot it over and over again, even if it was down or up. It literally made no difference. Yes. So I think that made the table get a bit tired for me. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. I do love randomly placed drop targets on the table. Mm-hmm. Like you know, just ones that pop out out of nowhere and surprise you. Like yeah. it's why I like the trolls on mm-hmm. um, on uh, medieval madness and stuff like that. Like things to bash are just fun. Yeah. And yes, that's why I want it to be at least in either an honorable or a, a Williams list because it, it is. It's got some fun elements to it, but I think it would really benefit from a code update. For oh, one hundred percent. There's no doubt about that. So yeah. And the thing um, is that the, the code update, the continued code update, it just adds a, just a little bit of extra polish to it. It doesn't really add a lot of extra game code to it. Like, yeah. you know, but it would just complete it, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So those are what we most want uh, from brought over from Pinball Arcade. Um, I mean, honestly, I would take anything. Yeah, I'll take every Williams table, but um, those are the ones I would like to see first. Um, and I mean, I'm looking at the list right there, and I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with Jared's list. <laughs> so I'm... And hey, look, 
I don't actually really have any f- hard objections against uh, Chris's either. Like, yeah, I, th- all I think ones. if I was to drop one from yours, it's who done it. It never did anything for me. Yeah, I think if I was to remove one from yours, I'm guessing um, diner. I think no, I actually oh. I don't mind diner. It would be F14 Tomcat. F14. For me. Okay. Yeah. 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 Diner's a fun table. It's got nice drop targets in it. It's got some good um, ball handling in it. So yeah, it's fun. It's a yeah. fun table. Um, so then we got to thinking, well, let's say that Zen had carte blanche to just bring in any table from any manufacturer. Whoop, mm. And here we go. It's our most wanted non-Williams tables. Um, so in the, in the uh, pretend world of, hey, if we could just have our wish, what would you bring in? Um, and I suspect my list is going to be vastly different from Jared's list. Because of the simple fact, I'd say so. Uh, Jared is fairly up to date on new pinball machines, and I am not. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of yeah. my list is uh, uh, rather dated. Uh, so I imagine that Jared's is going to be much more up to date. Um, but I'm still curious to see where we go with this. So I think I will yeah, start let's... us off in this. Um, yeah, you start us off. And you yeah. know what? Uh, let's go reverse order again. I think that's more fun. Mine so is starting from five. Number yep. five. So Alien. Oh yep. Um, the Pinball I, Brothers Alien. Yeah, yeah, I did get to play. Well, I didn't play. Uh, I didn't play the Pinball Brothers version. I played the other version. <laughs> oh right, the one. Yeah, um, right. What is it? Uh, uh, hi- highway Pinball. Highway. Highway Pinball. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. a table that needs to be played in the dark. Mm. The lighting on it is spectacular. Uh, It's got some cool mechs on it. Um, Just cool visuals. Uh, The only thing it was lacking was the... It had no audio from the movies. Uh, Right. or, or, Or dialogue, I should say. Or if it did, it was all Colonial Marines. They didn't have Ripley. I know that much. They didn't have Ripley. Um... Mm. And, and I think there was a ability to play v- either alien or aliens. Um, like there was two codes. Uh, oh, okay, if I'm that's not cool. Mistaken, um, but it was a loud, in-your-face, fun shooting, difficult machine. And I would love to. I only spent ten minutes on it because. It was one of those tables where it was like, you got to move on. <laughs> um, at the show yeah, I was they, on. That and, gave you a limited shot at it. Sort of yeah, thing. and I never saw it again. Uh, so I would, and, and of course, Alien, favorite franchise. So I would love to get some more time on it, and I think it would be uh, pretty, pretty amazing. So how about you, yep. Jared? What is your number five most wanted any manufacturer? I've taken some liberties here with my number five, and... I will I will say that they're let's call them conversion kits for existing Belly Williams tables. Oh. So I'm talking about brighter pinbot two point zero. There's actually now a funhouse two point zero. Okay. And a whirlwind two point zero out there now. So okay. these are direct replacements. Um like the brand new mainboard system goes into your back box. It's got a like a, a modern stern spike two video screen. Um, it's got literally a brand new rule set that gets overlaid over the table. So, um, 2.0 versions brand, of Williams. Two, literally 2.0 versions. And some of these ones are actually officially licensed by Chicago, um, uh, not Chicago, Planetary Pinball, which has the license for these mm. um, sort of things. So they're officially sanctioned licensed versions, which means with the right deals being struck, Zen could particularly, but like potentially, get these into the product. Okay, um, I've never played any of the 2.0 versions of any of those. I so. haven't either, but I know that they would actually add way more dimension to the System Eleven format of those those two well designed tables. Like the mm-hmm. the framework that would be laid on top of those tables, yeah, would make them a lot of fun. Okay, um, for number four. My pick is Metallica. Um, Mm. Just a 
it's the whole package is fantastic on this thing. Mm. Um, the ramps are very reminiscent of Medieval Madness, but they're just a little bit narrower. Uh, which makes oh it yeah, you've got to shoot them <laughs> super accurately on it. Yeah, because yeah. if you miss it, welcome to a drain. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's Brick City. Yeah, it's got the four uh, vertical stand-up targets. Um, that I love that the snake pit man, I think can be vicious. I love the mechs that are on it. The bash toy is way, way too much fun. Um, yeah, and then smacking the, weight, Sparky is good. Yeah, and and the sound package, it's the. Now, granted, I have not played again. <laughs> In terms of music tables, the last music table I play, okay, I played Beatles, but they had the volume like all the way down, so I didn't really hear anything on that. Um, I want to say. Aerosmith or Kiss was probably the last mm. music table. I've never played um, Iron Maiden. I haven't played Foo Fighters. What about ACDC? You played that? I'm not. Imp- I I just am not impressed with the table in general. Mm. Um, I don't know. There, there's something about the Metallica table that just works, and I think it's because you had the you know the band actually doing the callouts and and everything. Yeah. Um, it didn't just feel like, hey, we designed a table that has music on it. Um, it really feels like it incorporates every aspect of the band. It's it's why I really want to play Guns N' Roses from Jersey Jack. Um, mm. Data East Guns N' Roses is okay, but it gets skunked by modern music tables, so that's not going to make the list. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Metallica. Yeah, solid choice for position four. Mine is Jersey Jack's The Hobbit. The um, Hobbit. I, yeah, I played this. I actually had hands on this table um, at one point. Managed to get a really good high score on it, um, like in the three millions, which on that table, given it's a low scoring Jersey Jack, was no mean feat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I was on the thing for like 30 minutes or so. It, like literally the first time walking up to it and managed to get a high score on it. So um, it is, there's a, there's lots going on in the Hobbit and uh, it's, the theme is really well integrated. Um, so if you like the Lord of the Rings, um, it's a pretty neat one to get. And uh, yeah, it would make my list for sure. What about your? My um, Real quick. My impression was uh, when I played it, it was a bit slow. Uh, kind of, I mean, all Jersey Jack's, kind of have that feeling well i shouldn't say all of them uh like wizard of oz it, it just kind of feels floaty slow and i felt the hobbit felt that same way it's, yeah it's well they're, they're very wide body pins so yeah. they're gonna they're gonna have that that feeling to them just naturally um but like you said integration of theme is amazing like yeah incredible the lighting the sound package all that it's you know that's it's all top notch um yeah. all right for my number three Speaking of Jersey Jack, dialed in. Um, yes, I want my disaster pin from Lawler. Um, this is a machine that once I played it, being able to hear the audio, it made all the difference in the world. Um, and it's a very challenging table, um, pretty deep. Um, I don't know, I just I really enjoyed my time on it. Yeah, I, I still enjoy playing dialed in mm-hmm. where because it is on site and available to me. Um, it is it, it is for a a standard body pinball machine. Like yeah. it's not really a wide body. This no. one, they have jammed stuff into this every single <laughs> place. Like there's yeah. not a an area of the play field that doesn't have stuff on it, and it is a lot going on with it. Uh, it's yeah, you're right. The plug your headphones into this one if you come across it in the wild. Bring a yeah. wired set of headphones. Yeah, plug them in because the music on it is uh, music and sound package on it is huge. And, and it is a table that the callouts are very helpful. Uh, they are they super give informative. You massive amounts of information. That's why I said the first time I ever played it was in a noisy arcade and it had the volume down and I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing in this thing. The next time I played it, yep. I put the headphones on and I knew exactly what I was doing. And it was the call yep. made all the difference in the world. So yeah, a huge difference. Um, yeah. All right, Jared, your number three. No, number three is Rick and Morty. Uh, it is uh, the Spooky Pinballs Rick and Morty 
uh, brutal table. Uh, n- it's not a complex table, but if you love Rick and Morty as a show, the theme and integration is just super on point. Um, it, the lighting is incredible on it. Um, and yeah, it's a really fun game to shoot. It's got this, um, I really like the the portal where you shoot the ball in. It's got a stage ball that literally immediately pops a ball out the other end. So there's no delay. It's it's a really fun game to play. One of the steepest ramps I've ever seen in the play field <laughs> ever, which requires you to absolutely nail it. Mm. You've got to be very accurate with it. So yeah, um, I can't say yeah, I've ever seen it in the wild and I've uh, watched one episode of the show. So <laughs> I've... yeah, love it. If you know about it, yeah, like it, it, everyone I run into uh, at Netherworld where it's cited goes, oh, I hate Rick and Morty. I said, you just don't, you haven't found it yet. Mm-hmm. You just need to keep playing it and experience it and you'll get it when you get it. Yeah, it's fun. All right. A uh, most wanted non-Williams list would be absolutely incomplete without Big Bang Bar. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. It- Capcom. <laughs> Capcom again, not the not the most amazing shooting of tables, um, but it's a beautiful table to look at. The uh, sound package to it is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and it it has the satisfying shots. It's the ooh, I really want my ball to go up there, and you get it up there, and you're like, yes, it's kind of so it's that white water uh, effect. Um, yeah, that you just get pleasure out of the ball going exactly where you want to go, um, and that's why I, I that's why I put it there. I think that's why throughout time a lot of people just always request it. Um, partly also because of the rarity of finding it, but um, it's just it's a cool table that I really enjoy. Yeah, Big Bang Bar is one that I played a lot when i had vpx installed mm-hmm. many years ago like mm-hmm. it was just just one more time just one more time just one more time over and over and over again it there's something about it uh, it's not an easy table by yeah. any means no but it rewards you so much for playing it um, and in person and... is gorgeous with the black light it's it oh, just... i've never experienced it with a black light well that's the lighting on it is black light i mean the paint is black light it, it's it is wow. a never never table. would have realized that because yeah. I've only played it digitally. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How about your number two? My number two is Stern's Infinity War. Um and surprisingly, the pro version, not the premium version. Well, um let's go. It's pro. <laughs> which is weird. Um for two reasons, right? So the the premium version has the um, Doctor Strange disc that actually lifts up and you have to shoot a ball into it and then it stages it through an underplay field trough. The trough slows the gameplay down um, and it's actually really quite buggy as well. It mm. doesn't really work that reliably. Um, so that's like, you actually don't need it. Like the virtual locks work just as well and they keep the gameplay really fresh. Um, and the spin disc on its own without the the elevator in it, mm. it still works really well. It's got a really good heavy weight to it when you spin it. It doesn't feel like light and fluffy. It's really good. The other thing on that game, which is supposed to be the the other big feature, is this big like um, top hat U turn ramp. You can never shoot it. Like <laughs> your ball will go in there, it'll go halfway up, go back down, unless you really nail it and you shoot it. It it's literally adds not that much to the game. So mm. that's another bit of bill of materials that can go away. Um, and they just replace it with this really neat U-turn. Like, it's just a really quick U-turn that feeds it back down to your flipper again. It's actually better. Okay. So yeah, the pro version of that game is great. The code in it is great. Um, and it's a really fun game to play. All right. Well, with that, it brings us to our number ones. So my number one most wanted non-Williams... There it goes again. <laughs> um, is Lord of the Rings. Um, I one of the things I don't like about the table in person is it looks like they just stuffed action figures on it. But yeah, it's it's unfortunately 
in the era of Stern where they really had to watch their bill of materials. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but if Zen got his hands on it, why? Oh, then we'd have animated. There'd be a Balrog. There'd be you know the, our our hobbits running around. Um, I, there's just so much that the enhancements would do on that. Um, I can just imagine oh, yeah. the green mist coming out of of uh, uh, Mordor. Um, I don't know. I just think it would be really, really excellent digitally. Um, it's also such an insanely deep table that I've never oh getting to Felinor. Yeah, that I've never put time it's... into. So give me free play and let me just spend a buttload of time on it. That would be amazing. Mm. I would really, really like that. Um, so, I mean, yep. it's funny because essentially Lord of the Rings is the table that marks the new era of Stern. That's like what I would say is their, hey. That's a turning point table. It is a turning point yep. table. Um, yeah. And it's still a table that, you got to believe if they pulled that thing out of the vault and put it out there again, they would sell, They'd sell it, it in a minute. Yeah. You know, oh, like within a minute, it. they wouldn't yeah. sell. Yeah. Um, so, yep. yeah, that's why I think that's my number one uh, want on there. Um, yeah. All right. Your turn, yeah. Jared. Uh, yeah. I mean, hopefully, I'm still with you because I had a notification that my internet was gone. You're still there. Weird. I've been hearing you the entire time. Good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> um, well, my uh, number one is uh, Jersey Jack's Guns N' Roses. Ah. Because um, I played it, and it is by far the most tricked out and <laughs> wild Jersey Jack pinball out there at the moment. So is. so is it everything that the video promised and more? I uh, yeah, I don't really know what the video had. Well, in remember it, but, we, yeah, we did a show where we like broke down the trailer for it, and we're just like, dog, look at that! We're like drooling all over the place. Oh yeah, it is. It it lives up to the promo okay. and adds more to it. Like it is, the rules on this thing are just like oh, like it, there's so many rules that you can stack and and do stuff with, and the the light show in it is just. Did you get to play the fully tricked out version? Yeah. With the yeah. 600 lights or whatever it is? Yeah, with the lights that run up and down the, the cabinet and all that. It is something else, this thing. Like, uh, What's the sound I've package never like experienced. On Incredible. I mean, is so it just when, like in your face just... loud as... Yeah, so when you're actually playing the game just regularly and you're shooting around, getting to the point where you start one of the like songs in it, Yeah, um, it's like a... it's well-defined audio it helps you shoot the things but when you go into a song the volume level pumps up two levels oh, and nice. you're just getting blasted out of all the speakers mm -hmm. on this game um with with guns and roses tracks with fat alex uh, fat axel singing at you <laughs> um and and the just the craziness in the play field on this table is you you just have to experience to understand it is yeah it is a wild ride and honestly i think if zen got this i don't actually think they need to do any visual enhancements to it whatsoever just mm. put it in as it is and that's enough <laughs> like and the thing is a that if we know that this is a just not possible for them to put in the uh, licensing the on it would be moment. stupid just it's not only absurd. that but they it, the licensing would be like ridiculous it would make indie blush as far as the <laughs> licensing went um uh but the other thing too is that it, they just don't have enough light sources mm, yeah to to do it they, their their current unreal engine 4 does not have a, enough light paths to drive the amount of lights that are in this game mm. it is it is just a, an absolute um, electric parade, this thing. Like, wow. Yeah, quite an experience. So you can see why they're charging, you know, here in Australia, $22,000 for these. Yeah. Um, they, they, they have that much stuff in it that it's like, yeah, I can see that. I can see that bill of materials. So there's one more glance at our, uh, our top five most wanted non Williams. Uh, let me get, I'll read it off for our friends that are audio only. Uh, mine mm. starts with Lord of the Rings, then goes Big Bang Bar, dialed in Metallica, 
and then Alien, Jared's is Guns N' Roses, Infinity War Pro, Rick and Morty, The Hobbit, and then the three 2.0 versions of Williams Tables being Funhouse, Bride of Pinbot, and what was the other one? Uh, Whirlwind. Whirlwind. Just being announced. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. All right. Uh, we've, uh, we're, we're, we're running on the long side, Jared, so we'll make this uh, rather quick. Um, mm. Friendly reminder to everybody out there that uh, Star Trek Next Generation releases this week. Um, and Jared, yeah, you've had a crack week. on it. You've had a crack on it already. I didn't load it up yet. Yeah, I've absolutely had a play of the the press branch, and obviously can't to say too much about it. Can say that you're not going to be disappointed. There you go. That's uh, all we care about. Is it? <laughs> We're not disappointed. It's done good. Yeah, um, it's it done good. Way better than TPA's version. Yeah, oh, every I like the way better aspect. Yeah. Yeah, okay. way better. Excellent. So yeah, you're gonna love it. Love it's a day that. one purchase. Um, the other thing is that Zen, the right now currently running, is doing their Zen Classic Arcade Weekend. They've partnered with a bunch of other game uh, studios uh, over on Steam. A lot of the games they partner with are on sale. Um, mm. They've even put on sale their own. Uh, they're, they're calling the starter bundle for Pinball FX. That's basically, it's the uh, Pinball FX Universal Pack, the Williams Volume 3 Pack, um, which is, I guess I should say what the tables are, huh? That'd be helpful. Uh, yeah. Attack from Mars, uh, Black Rose, and what did I say the other one was? It was a Doctor Oh, Duke. Party Zone. Party Zone. Party Zone. And then Good the tables. Universal one is Jaws, yeah. E.T., and uh, Back to the Future. And then for free, if you are buying all of these as a pack, uh, you get the Secrets and Shadows pack, which is Mummy, Sky Pirates, and Noir. Um, and you can get all of it for the lovely, lovely price of $7.48. So not too cheap. US dollar box. Yeah. Which is um, cheap. Yeah. Uh, but they're like... Pimble Arcade tables are on sale. Um uh, 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 what they have left to Zach actually sell. Right. <laughs> Zacharia <laughs> pinball tables are on sale. Um, uh, Xenotilt, or not, uh, uh, well, yeah, Xenotilt just came out. Um, Demon's Tilt mm. on sale. Um, and then, yeah, yep. Xenotilt, brand new from the makers of Demon Tilt, uh, just came out. I've not downloaded it yet. Jared has and has had a crack at I it. I have already done the stream on it, so... Um, if you want to go and check that out on uh, the YouTube, uh, it's going to be releasing probably in about 30 minutes from now. <laughs> As in 30 minutes from Sunday when we're recording this, because I just set it to release at 10 o'clock my time. Right, there you go. And it's now 9.35. So, yeah, you've got to see the game release, of it. it. It'll be out, yeah. You'll be out. You'll be available um, on our YouTube channel. Um, so we're we're so, excited about this. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have to get my hands on it too at some point, and then uh, we'll be able to have a further discussion about it. Play, so I played it for 60 minutes on stream last night. I was able to confidently leave a review for it after 60 minutes, hmm. um, which I don't normally do with games. I like to play them for longer. That I didn't need to with with Xenotil. It's great. Get it and get it now while you're getting 10 percent off it. Yeah. Um, because it's literally like for for me in Australia, it was 20 bucks. Yeah, it's going to give me 20 bucks worth of enjoyment for sure. Adam's done a really good job of this. Excellent. And uh, geez, Adam, if you're listening, please reach out to us. We'd love to have you on the show and talk to you about this because <laughs> it's really cool. And I reckon you've got some stories to tell about the design process for this game. So come on, please. All right. Well, that will do it for uh, this week. I'm sure next time we come back, we'll actually, uh, I think I'll have a go at... Uh, Star Trek on the podcast or you know on this show. Yeah, we'll do a little let's play of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Jared um, will have streaming of it uh, prior to that, but um, we'll get both of our opinions uh, going on for that. So that'll definitely be uh, next time we come back, and then if any other news drops, um, we'll uh, of course hop in on that sort of thing. Um, that is hopefully yeah. that uh, you know if the floods don't take me away. <laughs> That's right. If you're not washed away, yes, uh, we'll 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 join up again in a couple of weeks' time. Exactly, and we'll we'll have a little chat about uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation. 
Uh, oh, oh, I thought you were going to say we'd have a chat about, uh, you know, the usual things that you like to talk about. Well, yeah, we'll also be chatting about the, the stuff and things that we all love. All right. About people. <laughs> Until next time, folks, uh, thanks for watching and listening. We really, really appreciate it. Um, please join the Discord and drop us a note about what you would like to do for a future show. I know Jared has uh, thrown some ideas our, our way. Um, we're going to try and incorporate those into a future show also. Um, so we really enjoy the community discussion uh, and uh, listening to what you guys want us to talk about. So please join in our Discord channel and do exactly that. Until yeah, I've then. done some more improvements to um, streams as well. So we got like Discord chat feeding into the the, oh, nice. the Steam chat. Um, so yeah, you can actually just use one thing to to talk about. It's Excellent. it's a little bit easier. All right. So yeah. until then, folks. Bye bye. Bye bye.